All right, let's talk tithing. I want to go over some questions about tithing, questions people ask, and uh, give some answers. So we'll just jump right into it. Uh, question number one, what is the tithe and is it something that applies to me? I get this question all the time. So a tithe, the word tithe literally means 10%. Uh, so tithe is 10%. It's not 7%. It's not 12%. It's 10%. And so if someone says, hey, I'm tithing 3% of my income, well, that's not true because they're giving or donating 3% of their income. They're not necessarily tithing. Tithing is 10%. So tithe means 10%. And um, what is the tithe? The tithe is uh, really our first and our best. Um, and so it's our first 10% that we return back to God. I say return because in the book of Malachi, uh, Malachi chapter 3, God says, you're robbing me. He says this to the nation of Israel. He says, you're robbing me. They say, how are we robbing you? And God says, in tithes and offerings, he says, bring the whole tithe into my storehouse and see if I don't open the floodgates, pour out so much blessing, you won't even know what to do with it. But God says to the people of Israel, and he would say it to us, uh, that the tithe, the first 10% of our resources, belong to Him. See, see, the truth is, everything we have comes from God, right? All of it, 100%. In the Old Testament, it says that the Lord is the one who gives us the ability to earn wealth. So everything we have comes from God. And then God says, now, uh, here's what the tithe does. It's essentially God saying, I want you to return, bring that first 10% back to me so you remember where it came from. Um, Jesus said, wherever our money goes, our heart follows. And the way that we ensure that our heart is planted and rooted in God, we return the first 10% of what He's given us as a way to say, hey, I know where this came from and I want my heart to be rooted and planted with God. And we just know, like when you start talking about money, um, it becomes a touchy topic real quick. Relationships change because of money. You loan somebody in your family some money, all of a sudden that relationship changes. Why? Because you care about that money. You buy something brand new, you take care of it. Why? Because you put money in it. Like we care about our money. So when Jesus says, uh, wherever your money goes, your heart follows, that is so true. And the tithe is God's system essentially of saying to us, I want your heart to be planted and rooted with me. So return the first 10% back to me. It's not that God needs our money. It's not that God's in heaven. He's like, man, the lighting bill up here is, is expensive and I need, I wish these people would give so I could pay for the lighting bill or these streets of gold are developing potholes. We need some money so we can finance this. Now, the reason why we tithe, here, here's why we tithe, is to remind ourselves that everything we have comes from God. It's a way to honor God as well. I say it's our first and our best. Uh, we see this principle early on in the scriptures. In the book of Genesis, um, it says that Adam and Eve, they have uh, two sons, Cain and Abel. And Abel uh, brings God the first fruits of uh, his, the, the fattened portions of his animals to God. It's the first. And then with Cain, it says in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruit. Uh, so he doesn't. He, he waits, he doesn't bring the first, and um, he brings some of it. And God doesn't accept uh, his offering. The reason, the reason, the reason, the tithe is a principal thing for us where we say, God, I'm going to make you first and foremost in my life. And I'm going to show you that by returning the first 10% back to you. We also tithe because we serve a God who's generous. We serve a God who gives. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, and as people who follow him want to be more like him, and so we too give, and we want to grow in giving. We want to be generous. So we tithe for all kinds of reasons, to remind ourselves of where it all came from, that it all came from God in the first place, to honor God and to become more like God in our generosity and giving. We want to be more like our Heavenly Father. And the other part of this question is, is this tithing apply to me? Isn't that an Old Testament thing? Isn't that something in the law? And now if we're Christians, we're not under the law. We're in the new covenant. We're in a covenant of grace. And the answer is, yes, tithing applies to everyone. Uh, 
See, tithing, the concept of tithing came before the law of Moses ever came into being in the Old Testament. Again, we see uh, the, this, this idea and understanding in uh, Cain and Abel, their sacrifice to God, but also uh, with Abraham when he gives the first 10% to the priest Melchizedek. Uh, so there's just some instances where we see the tithe taking place before the law ever is enacted. And then it's emphasized in the law of Moses. And then we even see it reinforced in the New Testament with Jesus. There's this time Jesus is talking to some religious leaders. And he says, hey, you tithe, uh, you, you give a tenth of your mint, cumin, and dill, like you're tithing your spices. That's great. That's awesome. But you're neglecting love and grace and peace and hope. So he says, instead, you should practice the former Practice tithing like you're doing without neglecting the latter. Yeah, tithe, but also love and give grace and joy. He doesn't say, hey, don't worry about the tithe stuff. No, no, no. He says, yeah, practice that and love and show grace and, 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 and joy and have peace. So um, tithing is emphasized and is, is reinforced in the New Testament. Um, also, when we think about giving and generosity, people willingly and gladly and cheerfully return the tithe back to God in the Old Testament before the sacrifice of Jesus, before the grace of Jesus, before the fullness of God uh, came to fruition. How much more so those of us now who have met Jesus and live on this side of grace and if we want to go by New Testament standards for how we live our life, which we should, what we see is that the early believers sell fields, sell homes, and give to the church. I don't know about you, but I'd rather stick with the 10% than selling fields and homes, right? But this is what they did. They exercised generosity in that way. So what is a tithe and is it something that applies to me? That's what the tithe is. It's really us saying, God, we want to be more like you when it comes to generosity. And yes, it definitely applies to us. So next question, should I tithe if I'm in debt? Should I tithe if I'm in debt? I owe some money. Uh, should I still tithe? Uh, so throughout the scriptures, never once do we see God make an exception where he says, hey, return the first 10% back to me, except for if you owe other people. Uh, no. So uh, I know for my wife and I, uh, so when I became a Christian at 13 years old, that's when I started tithing. Then and there, I understood the concept. Everything I had came from God, and I just committed to tithe, return the first 10% of my income back to God. Even when my wife and I got married and we had some debt, we continued to tithe through that because we were trusting God uh, through that debt. That's the other thing tithing does is saying, God, I'm going to trust you with my finances. When we choose not to tithe, we say, I'm going to trust my finances and my power to get me out of whatever situation. When we say, God, I'm going to trust you with my finances, we're placing our faith in God to provide. So if you're in debt, here's what I want to suggest. Get out of debt, make a budget, cut up the credit cards, live debt free. Christ came so that you can be set free. But um, while in debt, um, yes, yes, yes. Again, we tithed and I know a lot of people who tithe where they're still in debt and it's saying, God, we're going to trust you even though we're in this hole right now. And we're going to do the work required to dig ourselves out. So uh, should I tithe if I'm in debt? I'd say yes. The next question, why must the tithe go to the local church and not some other kingdom endeavors? What if I don't agree with how my local church spends money? Well, um, the reason why the tithe goes to the local church is in the Old Testament, the concept was the tithe went to the storehouse. This is a place where uh, food was stored and it fed the people. Well, the modern day equivalent of the storehouse today uh, would be the local church. This is where uh, you're, you're fed uh, spiritually, but not just, that's not the only place you're fed, but you're fed spiritually. Um, the, the church acts as a storehouse in, in a sense in that uh, we distribute um, good to others uh, for our church. We help fund uh, our strategic partners, nonprofit organizations that are making a difference around the world. Um, and uh, so the, in the Old Testament, the storehouse is where the tithe was brought uh, to the house of God, 
That would be the local church today. And then the question, what if I don't agree with how my local church spends money? Here's the thing. When you tithe, you're releasing that to God. You're saying, God, it's not my money anymore. And so what the church decides to do with what's given um, is really up to that church. And so you want to make sure you're part of a church that, that you love, that you believe in the mission and the vision of that church. Um, but when we give, when we bring the tithe back to God, there are no strings attached. It's not, here's, here's the tithe, but you have to do X, Y, and Z with my tithe. We're trusting the place where we're a part of uh, to use God's resources well. And if you ever have questions about how money is used, you should always ask. Um, but the other thing too is, um, I don't have to agree fully with everything that happens for me to exercise generosity and do what God has called me to do. Because I'm not, I'm giving to God through the local church. You with me? I'm giving back to God through the local church. I'm not giving to the local church. It's a big difference there. Uh, next question. Uh, should I tithe on the gross or the net? Uh, the gross is the entirety of what we get paid. The net is what happens when the government comes in and takes out part of our money. So should I tithe on the gross or the net? Well, we tithe on our income, on what we earn. And so what you earn is actually your gross. Uh, and then the government comes in, takes some of it, and then what you see is the net. What you see is not what you earned. You actually earned a lot more. So uh, for my wife and I, we tithe on the gross. Here's the other thing. Um, if I turn that question around, should I tithe on the gross or the net? I'd ask you, do you want to be blessed on the gross or do you want to be blessed on the net? I want to be blessed on the gross. I want to be blessed on more and not less. So we trust God uh, with the tithe, which is the entirety of our income, and we tithe on the gross. Um, next question, if I can't financially make the 10% work now because of debt, college kid living off of loans, hospital bills, new business startups, but I want to work towards it, does starting the tithe at 1% or 5% mean the rest of my money is cursed? Basically, is it better to not tithe at all until I can give 10%? Um, so we don't want to be legalistic about this, and, and it's really about our heart, and it's about our posture towards God. God, I want to be generous towards you, and I've done my budget. I've cut some things out, and, and it may mean, too, that you say, we're going we're gonna to cut out uh, eating out. We're going to cut cable. We're going to cut some of the luxuries of life so that we can return the tithe back to God. See, the tithe, again, is our first 10%, but what we often do is we say, well, I'm going to... I'm gonna, um, pay my mortgage, my car loan, my, um, my insurance, my phone bill, Netflix, Disney Plus, we're going to go out to eat. and blah. So we do all these things and they say, what's left over? God, I'll give you my leftovers. But, but God is not a dog. Dogs eat leftovers. God does not. God calls us to bring the first and the best. So what I'd encourage you to do is make a budget and see what, what, can you sacrifice? Because that's also what a tithe is. It's a sacrifice to God. God, what am I going to sacrifice to be obedient to you and trust you with my finances? But if you get to a point where you say, man, I, I just, the 10%, I can't, um, then it's not a tithe, but ask the question, what can I give? Where can I start? And I'll work my way up to there. But tithing really is an exercise of trust. So uh, next question, what if I'm unemployed? Oh, if you're unemployed, you don't have an income, so you can't tithe. Um, another one, my husband or spouse doesn't want to tithe, but I do. How do I honor my spouse and God at the same time? And this is tough. This is tough because when you're married, you're one, right? It's not my income and her income. It's not your bills and my bills. It's our bills. It's all one together. And so if you want to honor God with um, your finances, your spouse doesn't want to, there's a deeper issue than just tithing. And so I'd encourage you to work through communication. Um, I'd encourage you to say, how do we get on the same page? Here's this thing that I love. Here's this thing I've given my life to, I'm a part of. And so it would mean the world to me if we could do this together, right? Um, but giving, returning the tithe against your spouse's wishes is not helpful for them and it's not helpful for you. Um, so I'd say, um, have a conversation and say, what can we give? This is really important to me. I really want to do this. What, what can we give? What can we do with our finances? You do the same with um, um, 
I mean, a- anything else in life, whatever is important to you, just voice that. This is really important to me. I want to honor God in this way. I want to honor you, which is why we're talking about it. So I'd love to see what can we give. Next question. What if uh, I have a business and I pay myself from the business? Do I tithe on uh, the business profit or the income I take home from my business? So as individuals, we return the tithe. God never calls for a business to tithe. He never calls for a church to tithe that I know of, um, but for individuals to tithe. Now, our church as an organization tithes. So the first 10% of everything that's brought in, we give back out to strategic partners and nonprofit organizations to do the work of God throughout the world. Um, But God calls individuals to tithe. So whatever income you bring from the business you own, that's what you tithe on, right? Now, if you say we want our business to tithe on it, then you tithe on whatever the surplus is. So after expenses and marketing and all that stuff, whatever the profit is, that's what you would tithe on. Um, Tithing is uh, given the first 10% of our income, of our income. Uh, Question number nine, or I'm sorry, I don't know where that number came from. Next question. Um, What do blessings look like? Blessings look like this. So in Malachi chapter three, God says, return the tithe and see if I don't open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings, you won't even know what to do with it. And sometimes people think, oh, blessings is money. Like if I give God $10, he'll give me a hundred bucks. That's not how it works. Sometimes blessing is, is financial and money. But, but really, more than that, when I return the tithe back to God, the blessing I get is, is peace, knowing that I'm following Him, is a greater sense of faith and trust, knowing that I'm following Him and what He's called me to do. When I return the tithe, blessings look like joy and hope. I mean, so many intangible things. This is what blessings look like, knowing that we're following God in our finances. And again, I've heard stories, I've experienced it myself. When we return the tithe back to God, we see that there, sometimes there's financial blessings and we receive more than, than we thought we had coming in. So blessings can be financial, but they're not always. Um, should I tithe on gifts like wedding gifts? Again, the tithe is our income. So if that's income for you, that's an increase for you, uh, return the first 10%. Uh, Should I tithe on my portfolio increases or when I take money out if it's retirement or investments? Again, it's income. Um, So on any increase that you get, that's what we we tithe on because God is the one who provides the increase. Um, And he he provides the ability for us to earn wealth. And then last question I want to answer is this. What does it mean to be a cheerful giver? What does it mean to be a cheerful giver? To be a cheerful giver means we don't give begrudgingly like we have to. And again, this isn't about the letter of the law and we have to. And we don't want to be legalistic about this. But we want to say, God, because you've given me so much, you, like, of course I want to give back to you, right? Like, God, God, you've given me everything I have beyond finances and everything. You've given me everything I have. And here's the great thing. God, you let me keep 90% of it. What? I get to keep 90% of it? Oh, yeah. God, of course I want to honor you. Of course I want to remember you. Of course I want to trust you by returning the 10% back to you. We take that deal any day. If I said to you, I want to give you $1,000, $1,000 you don't have right now, the only thing I want you to do is give me $100 back, you'd say, yes, I will take that deal. And you'd be cheerful about it. Why? Because you realize where it came from. You realize it wasn't yours in the first place. And you realize it was a gift. So a cheerful giver realizes everything we have comes from God. It's all a gift. It's not ours in the first place. And it all comes from Him. So I um, hope these answers are helpful to questions you have about tithing. I'm believing that God wants you to take the next step, whatever that is, to set a percentage, uh, to start tithing in some way. Um, and maybe for some, uh, you've been giving, you've been tithing, and then it's time to move into an offering. See, the tithe is obedience to God. God says, return the tithe back to me. That's obedience when we tithe. When we give above that 10%, that's an offering. That's when we break into generosity. I wonder if God is calling you not just to be obedient, but to also be generous. So let's be givers because our God is the ultimate giver.